I was on 265 today. Yeah, you get on that bitch the wrong way, you pack a lunch. I saw a skeleton in a car on 265. And I was trapped behind this woman going slow in the fast lane. I don't mean she's going like 40 or 45. The woman was going too. And I couldn't go around it if I wanted to because somebody decided today was a day to move half a house. Have you seen that half a house going down the street? If you got a house where you can pick it up and move it, leave that piece of shit where it is. It is not going to help you in the long run. So this woman, she didn't realize she needed to move out of the wayside to blow my horn. You hate to blow your horn to people. They get mad, you get mad, but I got shit to do. All right, I got a big show for 27 people. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to build a career. So I pull up behind her in my 86 Sunbird. <laughs> Don't be jealous. And these people at Pontiac, instead of putting a horn in the middle where it's supposed to be, they give her these little thumb horns on the side. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, lady, you got to speed up. Don't make me lean on it. You know it's sad. You lean on your horn, your car slows down. What the hell is it? I got a car. Every time something starts to rattle on the car, I just turn the radio up. Anybody driving this car? If I can't hear it, it's not happening. That's my theory. Friends get in the car, radio loud as hell. Why is your radio so loud? Because I'm tired of hearing shit fall off. Get in the car. You hear that muffler? I ain't got time for 20 questions. Get in the car. I hate my car. I do. I'm pissed at my car right now. My car keeps running in the shit. I know what you're thinking. All right, maybe it's you driving in the shit. No, it is not me. Okay, I'm not responsible for what my car does when I'm asleep. You can't blame me for that. I put it on cruise control. It's supposed to control the crew. That's false advertising. I'm taking that shit back. I was, uh, I was on the 265. A lot of construction out there on the highways, the 265, the 65, the 64. They do that, and they always have these signs to make sure you're very careful around the construction work. Like I saw the sign the other day, you probably seen it in the kid's head, right? Please be careful, my daddy works here. Have you seen that? Yeah. yeah. I don't know why they don't just write daddy a note, tell him, get the hell out of the road. <laughs> Dear daddy, move. <laughs> Put in this lunchbox. <laughs> You're going to have a sign like that. You need to tell the truth on the sign. Please be careful, my daddy going to make your ass late to work again. Please be careful, my daddy's standing around leaning on a slow sign, not doing shit. That's what you need to put. <laughs> I understand, obviously, why they have the sign. It's like, hey, this guy's trying to, uh, you know, get home to his wife and family. You need to be careful. Like, if he was single, just run his ass over. <laughs> Dude, I would have swerved, but you ain't got no kid. <laughs> The sign doesn't say, please be careful, a player works here. That's not what the sign says. <laughs> Read the sign. In Michigan, they're very serious about the construction workers sign. They had a sign in Michigan. I've never seen this anywhere else. It said, um, if you injure or kill a worker, you know what I'm talking about, $7,500 fine and 15 years in jail. If you injure, well, shit, you might as well kill him. <laughs> you go into prison either way. And when you get in there, it's not going to be these onesie, twosie criminals. It'll be some hardcore guys in the bit. Like, why are you in here? I stabbed a man in the neck because he took the last piece of bread. <laughs> why are you in here? <laughs> <laughs> Funny story, Matt, though. I bumped a worker with my car. That's, uh, actually, I didn't hit him. I hit a barrel. Barrel hit him. So now I'm in here with you. <laughs> we. Oh my goodness, trying to lose weight, working out. Dude, you work out? Good for you, don't even try to bullshit me. I can tell, I can tell, I can tell. I'll tell you why I started working out. I was watching this newscast, right? And they had all of these people, like the obesity epidemic or whatever, and so it was like showing all these people from the neck down, you know, how big they were. And I'm watching, I'm like, oh my God, that guy's so fat, look at him. Guy coming out of McDonald's, he should be ashamed of himself. I got a shirt just like that. <laughs> Oh, shit, it's me. 
So I started working on him, lifting the weights. Anybody lifting the weights? Who lifts them? Anybody lift them? Yeah. Are you really lifting them? Good for you, lifting the weights. This is something I found out about weightlifters. First of all, there's never just one. This lot was a pack. Right? Because they all have a job. Like the one guy, his job is to actually lift the weight. Right? The other guy, the second guy, his job is to yell at the guy lifting the weight. Right? Like, Get it! Move it! Move! That's his job. Everybody else's job, their job is to stand around and talk about how good they look. <laughs> oh, dude, you look good. Thanks, man. You think so? Look at my chest, man. My pecs. I'm working on my pecs. Hey, you can you know, you feel that, right? Oh, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Right. Used to call it gay. Now it's weightlifting. Um, I don't know what happened. Actually, I, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't have to work out so much. I'll tell you right now. I have this one weakness of all the foods in the world. My favorite food in this world, breakfast cereal. We've got cereal people in it. If there's a Captain Crunch, I'm his first lieutenant. I don't care if it is $1,000 a box. Yes, crack might be cheaper. Whatever. I can't hear you. I'm crunching too loud. See, that goes back to my childhood, because when I was a kid, we could not afford the fun, see him on TV, buy him in a box cereal. I had to buy the other cereal that didn't come in the box. You know what I'm talking about? The bags. Yeah. They wouldn't even put the bag on the second or the third shelf. Where'd they put the bag? On the bottom. You had to crawl around on your hands and knees. <laughs> For some wheat puffs. And it wasn't even a normal side bag, it was this giant bag. You look like a little Cambodian refugee crawling through Al 7 with the wheat puffs on your back. My grandmother, she'd feel sorry for us. She'd buy a box of cereal, but she wasn't watching the right Saturday morning cartoon. She was bringing home shit like cream of wheat. I know, right? I know. Who has not had cream wheat? Clap if you had not had the cream wheat spirit. You have not? Right, you have, you kids have not. Oh. Well, you, you know what? How old are you, buddy? 23. 23. You know why you haven't had it? They outlawed it in 1994. <laughs> That's why you just under the wire, my friend. You just barely. So I'm going to explain to you what the cream wheat, um, because I am suffering from PTCOWSD, post traumatic cream wheat stress disorder. <laughs> So you may have somebody in your right. You may have somebody in your family who will snap. I want you to be prepared. <laughs> know what they're going through. Next time, oh, you see this brick wall behind me? Well, notice the shit coming out of the bricks. <laughs> that is cream of wheat, right there. That's. <laughs> I can't believe somebody actually thought this shit. Of me. Stood up in a room full of people. You know what? We need to take some bananas, hot water, and sand. <laughs> put it in a bowl, give it to the children. <laughs> then they put the black guy in the box, try to blame the shit on us. We don't know how to do it. You guys are excellent. Thanks for coming out on a Friday night. <laughs>